about a crusher. Yes! Oh! Are you kidding me? And... Oh! Welcome back to the Schoolyard Sports Lane Frank Podcast. On those this podcast, Lane Frank, we're not in episode number 24. We're 24 episodes through. And there's a lot to get through. Spring training is starting the MLB. College basketball is heating up. The NBA, it's just been insane as of late. And so much more. So stay tuned for Squared Sports Lane Frank, episode number 24. It's going to be a good one. Stay tuned. Now, let's start off episode number 24, how we always do with our headlines in the NBA. The Jazz beat the Lakers, and I said the Jazz were the best team in the NBA. They still are a great team in the NBA. Maybe not the best team in the NBA right now on my list, but they did beat the Lakers. They don't have AD, the Lakers. They lost to the Nets. They lost to a couple other teams. They lost to the Wizards. They're not playing well at all, the Lakers. Losing to the Jazz. They're not as good as they were last season. They're not as great as they were last season. That's my takeaway from what I've seen lately from the Lakers. Maybe they can switch around, but I don't think so. The Jazz dominated the Lakers. The Nets, they're on fire. On fire. They dominated that road trip, mostly without KD. They've been playing amazing. They beat the Clippers. They beat other teams. This team's amazing right now. They might be the best team in the NBA. I'm serious. Nets are on fire right now. On fire. James Harden, Kyrie, and when KD comes back, they might be the best team in the NBA. And there won't be much debate about it. Nets are on fire right now. Now, let's move over to college basketball. Michigan beat Ohio State on Sunday. What a game that was. They beat Ohio State. It was the best game in college basketball this year. No debate about it. I think it was it was a really, really, really good game. Credit to Ohio State. I don't think I would ever say that in my life before. I never thought I'd say that. Credit to Ohio State. But Michigan did win. What a game by Zay Livers. What a game by Trondy Brown. What a game by Franz Wagner. What a game by Hunter Dickinson. What a game by everybody in that Michigan lineup who played that game. Mike Smith. Everybody. I'm probably forgetting a couple guys. Michigan played amazing against Ohio State, and they definitely are the best team in college basketball, in my opinion. Baylor, they gave off their three-week pause, and guess what? They almost lost to two-win Iowa State team. Iowa State has two wins, and they barely, they squeaked by them. Iowa State had the lead for most of that game. Yes, I know Baylor's on three-week pause, but so is Michigan. Then they came back, and they had to play a ranked Wisconsin team, and they beat that ranked Wisconsin team by eight. So, in my opinion, Michigan is a much better team than Baylor. Yes, Michigan has one loss and Baylor has none, but Baylor, I'm not fully sold. They're still a top four team in college basketball, in my opinion, but I used to say they're the best for a while. No, Michigan is the best team in college basketball now. Gonzaga, they're playing really, really well, but I still think Michigan's the best team in college basketball. That's about it for the headlines. Let's move on to more in this extravagant episode number 24. Now, the Knicks, they invited fans back. They had 2,000 fans to their first game on Tuesday against the Warriors. And I actually went to that game. That's why this episode's later in the week. It's on our regularly scheduled Thursday release date. But I went to that Knicks game, Knicks-Warriors. And it wasn't as bad as I thought it was be. I mean, it was awesome going to a game. There wasn't many. You had to wear a mask the whole time, but that wasn't a big issue. It was just, I mean, it was amazing going to a Knicks game, finally being back at a sporting event. It was amazing. Madison Square Garden, just enough right amount of fans. They did lose to that game to the Warriors. It was an awesome game. So my takeaways from it were that R.J. Barrett is a little too soft. He's not that great of a player. My expectation for him when he came out of college was the next James Harden, but no. He's too soft. He hesitates too much. He's not that great of a player. I wish he was. I, I mean, Knicks are my favorite team in the NBA. I wish the Knicks... I mean, the Knicks are probably going to end up being a playoff team this year, and I'm so excited about it, but they're probably going to be a first-round exit because R.J. Barrett isn't that great as they expected him to be. Julius Randle made the All-Star team that night. Everyone is going crazy. It was awesome. They are giving an MVP chance even when he got ejected at the end. It was an awesome game, but just R.J. Barrett not play well at all. Another thing was Steph Curry's absolutely amazing, just insane. It was like every shot would go in for him. They would, and then the Knicks, the officiating was not as great as I thought. It wasn't good at all. Thibodeau was really mad at them, got tech. Julius Randle got ejected. Lost a challenge. It wasn't a great game for the Knicks, but they had a lot of opportunities, a lot of missed layups. Emmanuel quickly was terrible in that game. Julius Randle didn't have his greatest game. Derrick Rose actually played well, which I was happy about to see Derrick Rose playing well, but just the Knicks. 
couldn't close it out. They lost by eight. It wasn't a great game for the Knicks, but it was just awesome. Going to a Knicks game, going to Madison Square Garden. The first game back with fans. It was awesome. I mean, I'm glad sporting fans are finally coming back. It was amazing to see just the right amount of fans, but I went to the Knicks game, and it was awesome. Those are my takeaways from it, and leave your thoughts in the comment section. Now, top five, and today's a good top five. My top five bowl predictions for the NFL offseason. I haven't done bowl predictions in what seems like forever. I think the last time I did it was bowl predictions for the NBA Finals. But these are my top five predictions for the NFL offseason. Number five, Marcus Mariota will get traded to the Patriots. Josh McDaniels, Bill Belichick, they want another dual-threat quarterback not named Cam Newton. They want a mobile guy. They want a guy who can also sling it down the field. Marcus Mariota played one game this year, and he was incredible, and he didn't even play the full game. They lost that game. They threw for four, 300 yards. He ran for a lot of yards. He played well. They're going to probably trade him, the Raiders. They have Derek Carr. I don't think they're going to trade Derek Carr. I think they're going to trade Marcus Mariota. And I think Bill Belichick, Josh McDaniels, they want Marcus Mariota as their next quarterback. And that's number five. Bowl prediction of the NFL offseason. Number four, Allen Robinson goes to the Ravens. You know, Bears might franchise tag him. They might. But then he's going to hold out, maybe. Maybe they're going to trade him. Maybe something crazy is going to happen. Maybe they're going to let him walk in free agency. But I think, when it's all said and done, he's going to end up being a Baltimore Raven. Number three, the Buccaneers lose. You know, they got a lot of free agents this offseason. They got a lot of them. I think they lose Chris Godwin and Levante David in free agency. I don't think Chris got. I mean, Chris Godwin, he kind of wants to go back, but he also wants to get his money. He might want to go to the Dolphins. He might want to go to another team. I think he walks, and so do I think Levante David. I think they both leave in free agency. Really, really would be terrible for the Bucs, but I still do think that they would be a great team next year, even, this, even if this did happen. But Brady would lose another target, and that defense would lose another amazing player. Let's move on to number two. Deshaun Watson gets traded to the Carolina Panthers. He's going to get traded. He will. He definitely will. And the Panthers want him the most. They're clearing cap space. They're trying to trade Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Bridgewater, I mean, he unfollowed them on Instagram. He's not happy with them at all. Teddy Bridgewater did not live up to my expectations this season. And I was a little bit wrong. A couple months ago, we did a segment. Should these NFL teams draft a quarterback or should they stick with their own? And I said, stick with Teddy Bridgewater. But no, Teddy Bridgewater... Throughout the season, he just regressed so much. He just went so downhill. Really, really downhill. They need a new quarterback, and I think that new quarterback will be Deshaun Watson. That's my number two bull prediction this offseason. You're saying, Deshaun Watson getting traded isn't the number one bullish prediction this offseason? No, it is not. It is not. The number one, my number one bull prediction for this offseason is that Russell Wilson will get traded to the Bears. Call me a clown. Call me whatever. He's going to get traded. I think he's going to get traded to the Bears. Nobody in the world thinks he's going to get traded. Nobody. A couple reports coming out this week that, you know, he's frustrated with them. He's mad with them. He's not going to demand a trade, but he does have a list of teams, and the Bears are one of those list of teams. He's going to get traded to the Chicago Bears. All right. I think when it's all said and done this NFL offseason, we're going to be saying Russell Wilson is a Chicago Bear. They're going to have to get rid of Allen Robinson, clip some cap space. This would be amazing. Russell Wilson... On the Bears. That run game. That improving O-line. Cole Komet is their tight end. Darno Moody, wide receiver. They've got a lot of good pieces. That defense. This would be amazing. My number one bull prediction for this offseason is that Russell Wilson gets traded to the Chicago Bears. That's about for top five. Leave your top five bull predictions for the offseason in the comment section. Those are mine. Still more to come on episode number 24. Now, did you know, today's did you know is, did you know that only one Mr. Relevant ever has won a Super Bowl? If you don't know what the Mr. Relevant is, it's if you're picked last in the NFL draft. So, seventh round, pick 32. Pick 32 of the seventh round. Nobody's ever won the Super Bowl. That's bought. Except for Ryan Suckup, the Buccaneers kicker this year. He's the first Mr. Relevant ever to win a Super Bowl. That's crazy. I mean, you'd think before maybe somebody like on it bat on a good team just to bench warm, but no. Ryan Suckup was a starter on that Bucks team. He was the kicker, and he won a Super Bowl. Did you know that? Leave that in the comment section. That's about for Did You Know This Video. Now, let's 
to revisit my Pelican blow. Remember when I said they need to blow up that team, they need to do everything with it. And they blew that huge lead to the Suns. They did come back against the Celtics, and they did come back against the Pistons, but that's the Pistons. So let's revisit that Pelican blow up. And I want to give you what I think the Pelican starting five should look like. I think at point guard, it should be Kyra Lewis Jr. Trade Lonzo Ball. I know he's playing better, but trade Lonzo Ball. Put Kyra Lewis in that lineup. Kyra Lewis is the next D. Aaron Fox, in my opinion. He's amazing. Lonzo Ball, yeah, he's having a couple good games. Okay. He's having a couple good games. Yeah, yeah, and the trade rumors start to die down. Then he shoots 0 of 10 the next game. Just trade him. Trade him to my Knicks. I'd love that. Trade him to the Clippers. Trade him to any team. Man, just get him out of there and put Kyra Lewis Jr. into that starting line. That's your first move. Then you got to trade J.J. Redick and Eric Bledsoe. And you can put whoever at the two. You can put Josh Hart. You can maybe trade for a shooting guard. But you got to trade J.J. Redick and Eric Bledsoe. You just got to. Eric Bledsoe's having a terrible year, so is J.J. Redick isn't playing that great. They need to change the scenery. Plug whoever at the two. Shooting guard. Maybe Josh Hart. He's been playing well as of late. That'd be amazing. Just whoever at shooting guard and they got Kyrie Lewis at point guard. They got B.I. Brandon Ingram at three. Small forward. Zion and Brandon Ingram are your building blocks. Your untouchables. Anybody else in that team? Eh. You can trade them. They're on the trade block. Yeah. Brandon Ingram and Zion. Those are your building blocks. So Zion at the four. Brandon Ingram at the five. And then guess who's going to be the center? Who I think the center should be. Go after Andre Drummond. Trade Steven Adams, all right? The Steven Adams trade. You got him this offseason. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to be a great team. We got Eric Bledsoe. We got Lonzo Ball. We got Zion. We got Brandon Ingram. We got Steven Adams. They're one of the worst teams in the Western Conference right now. One of the worst teams in the Western Conference right now, by record. This team needs to blow up that whole team. They need to trade for Andre Drummond. They trade whoever. Trade Eric Bledsoe. Trade J.J. Redick. Trade Steven Apps. I don't care. Just get Andre Drummond. And this is what your starting five should look like. I did an NBA 2K21, and it worked. I won a championship in like three years. Yeah, I mean, that's fancy, but... <laughs> do this lineup. Make this the starting five. How amazing this would be. Blow up the team, David Griffin. Stan Van Gundy, this is what your starting lineup should look like. Those are my thoughts. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. That's about it for the revisiting my Pelican blow up. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Let's jump in to the rundown, the NBA rundown. So, the Nets, like I said in the headlines, they might be the best team in the NBA. All right, I'm serious. Probably right now, what my list would look like would be one Jazz, two Nets, three Lakers, four Sixers, and then maybe like five Clippers. I don't know, I'm probably forgetting a couple teams, but the NBA this year is stacked. It is every year, but the Nets are insane this year. Insane, all right? They are going to be the best team in the NBA when KD comes back. They're on a huge winning streak. This team is the second best team in the NBA, and they'll probably be the best team in the NBA very, very soon. The Jazz, all right, they're the Jazz. They're going to, it's going to be a second round elimination. It's going to be a conference finals elimination. They're not going to make the finals, all right? You think the Jazz will make the finals? Swipe off this video right now. Swipe off it. Jazz are not going to make the finals. Nets will, though. And maybe the Lakers when AD comes back. Maybe the Clippers. Maybe the Sixers. I don't know. But Nets right now are on fire. And they're playing as one of the best teams in the NBA. The Lakers, like I said, not as good as they were last year. But they can maybe get some things going. Maybe make a couple trades before the deadline. That'd be good. Make a lot of trades. Try and get a better point. I know Dennis Schroeder is out right now. Anthony Davis is out. Just, when all of them come back, I think this team will be solid again. They'll be good again. They're not the best team in the Western Conference, but maybe not the best team record-wise, but best overall team? I think so. I think this team will make the finals this year. No debate about it. But, in my opinion, the Lakers are not as good as they were last year. Brad Stevens should not be on the hot seat. Everyone's saying, Brad Stevens should be on the hot seat. This Celtics team is terrible right now because they're out of the playoff picture. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Brad Stevens, they blew that huge lead to the Pelicans. This team is playing terrible. They, Brad Stevens needs to be fired. Too many conference round exits. Don't fire Brad Stevens. Don't put Brad Stevens on the hot seat. Brad Stevens may be one of the best coaches in the NBA. Call me crazy. I really don't care. Brad Stevens is amazing. A good coach. He should not be on the hot seat at all. The Celtics team, they'll regroup. They'll get like the sixth seed or something, but then they'll make a deep run in the playoffs. They will. Don't worry, Celtics fans. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, they have it taken care of. They better because I've been so high on the Celtics team. Remember when I said they were the second best team in the NBA? 
eh, they're not the top five team in the NBA, maybe not even top 10. Some could argue not top 15, but it's not the next team. They'll get things going again. Brad Stevens, he's a good coach. He shouldn't be on the hot seat at all. That's about it for the rundown in the NBA. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Now, continuing with the NFL offseason, here's my NFL draft big board. So, who am I? I think the top five quarterbacks are in this draft class. Well, I think top three running backs. Just for the offensive side, what is the defensive side? The ball, maybe in a few episodes down the way. But right here, my big board, the offensive side, top players in each position. So, let's get into it. Number one, quarterbacks. Trevor Lawrence. All right, no explanation needed. Enough said. Trevor Lawrence is the best quarterback this draft class. Number two, Zach Wilson. Not much to be said there either. Number three, he's where I'm going to shock a couple of people. Mac Jones. All right. Mac Jones. Next, Joe Burrow, in my opinion. Maybe a little bit less mobile than Joe Burrow, but he's a lot more accurate than Joe Burrow. People say Tua. I mean, people say Mac Jones. He's only good because he had a good receiving core. Tua had a better one, I hope people know. Tua had Jerry Judy. Tua had Henry Ruggs. Tua had Calvin Ridley for one year. He had a bunch of players. Mac Jones, he just, and he had Jalen Waddle, Tua. Mac Jones just had John Mechie, Devontae Smith, and Jalen Waddle. Great receiving core, but Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, Jalen Waddle, probably take that over that receiving core. Tua had a better one. People trash Mac Jones. Mac Jones is the third best quarterback in this draft class. Don't be about it. Let's move to running backs now. Number one, Najee Harris, the best running back in this draft class. Number two, Travis Etienne, good running back. Had a really good year this year. Second best running back in this draft class. Number three, I might shock a couple people here. Chuba Hubbard. He opted out of the season midway through the year. He didn't have that great of a year, but the year before, he was sort of a Heisman hopeful, close to getting an invitation to the Heisman, but he was good last year. Great Chuba Hubbard last year. He's a good running back. Put him maybe with the Broncos, because he's from Canada. He knows what it's like to play in cold weather. That'd be amazing. He's a great running back, Chuba Hubbard. Number three on my list. Now it's for the wide receivers. Number one. Jamar Chase, you're saying, where's Devontae Smith? Where's the 6'1", 175-pound wide receiver? You're saying he's the best? Some people are saying he's the best player in this draft class. He's a great player, but Jamar Chase is better, in my opinion. Jamar Chase is the next Julio Jones. He's not the fastest, but he's great. Number two, Devontae Smith. I used to have Devontae Smith at three, but he's at two. Number three, Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle, next Harry Kill. No debate about it. Now, the last part of my big board, my tight ends. The big boys. The best tight end in this draft class, though, is Kyle Pitts. He doesn't drop too many balls. All right, I'm going to make a lot of take out here. He's probably the best red zone threat I have ever seen. He's the best red zone threat I have ever seen in my lifetime. No debate about it. Kyle Pitts, great player. He'll excel professional level. Number one. Number two, last tight end, Pat Frymuth. I used to think they were neck and neck. Pat's a great player. Some people compare it to Gronk. He's good. He's a walking tight end. He's a good tight end. Not at the Cal Pitts' level. He's a great tight end. But that's about it for my NFL draft. Big board. So the best players at each position on the offensive side of the ball. Skill players, excluding offensive line. But that's about it for that. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Now, we all know Carson Wentz got traded to the Colts. Seems like old news by now, but I haven't had a chance to talk about an episode yet. So, let's give my Eagles, Colts, Carson Wentz trade grades. I'm going to give the Eagles a B. My instant trade grade that I put on Instagram was a C. A C for the Eagles. But I go into some things. I have time to think about it. It's a B, all right? You get a first-round pick. You get a second-round pick that's probably going to turn into a first. Eh. You get a third-round pick. Eh. But you get Ray Carson Wentz. You get a first-round pick for next year. You get a third-round pick you can use on a wide receiver if Harry Roseman doesn't screw it up. But I liked Carson Wentz a lot more than I liked Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts could be a great player someday, but Carson Wentz could be better, in my opinion. This is a great deal for the Colts. I'm going to give the Colts an A-. minus. The potential to shoot up to an A+. plus. Frank Reich, in that system, it's amazing, Carson Wentz. With those receivers, Michael Pittman Jr., Zach Paschal, Paris Campbell, T.Y. Hilton. They're going to be great next year. They might make the Super Bowl. I mean, AFC, it's going to be hard, but Carson Wentz is going to have a great year next year. He's going to throw 36 touchdowns, and he's going to throw 13 interceptions. He's going to have almost career year. He's going to have a great year, Carson Wentz, in my opinion. A great year. I'm going to give the Colts an A-. minus. 
What a deal this is for the Colts. What do you mean about? Those are my trade grades. Leave your trade grade in the comment section. What are you going to give the Eagles? What are you going to give to the Colts? Do you think Jalen Hurts is a better player than Carson Wentz? Do you think Carson Wentz is better than Jalen Hurts? Leave that in the comment section. Now, college basketball madness. March Madness is less than a month away. We're going to be filling out brackets soon. You're going to be filling out who your Final Four will be. Here's what my Final Four predictions are. Baylor's going to make the Final Four. They're going to sneak it on in there. Gonzaga's going to make the Final Four. And Michigan's going to make the Final Four. But who's going to get the last spot? There's a couple of dark horses, in my opinion. Oklahoma State, they're a dark horse. They, at one point, were banned from the NCAA tournament this year. Self-imposed ban. But they're going to be in it this year. They're going to be in it. Maybe just not next year. But this year, they'll be in it. And they might be a dark horse for the Final Four. USC, they might be a dark horse for the Final Four. They have the former number one overall recruit, Evan Mobley. They're ranked right now, top 20. They're playing really well. 19-3, I think, is what their record is right now. They're a dark horse for the Final Four. And they actually are. My fourth Final Four spot. My Final Four predictions are Baylor's going to make the Final Four. Gonzaga's going to make the Final Four. Michigan's going to make the Final Four. All expected, but then I'm a snake. USC Trojans in there. USC. They're going to make the Final Four this year in basketball. You're thinking, USC basketball's going to make the Final Four? USC will make the Final Four this year. No debate about it. That's my Final Four predictions. Leave your Final Four predictions in the comment section. Those are mine. Now, the All-Star team, NBA All-Star again. They've been announced, all the All-Stars. And every year, there's always a lot of snubs. A lot of people are saying Devin Booker, but Devin Booker snuck in. He took Anthony Davis' spot. But there are a lot of other snubs. So let's jump into my NBA All-Star, who I think got snubbed from the NBA All-Star game. Trey Young, easily, easily. The game's in Atlanta. He's on the Hawks. He's had insane numbers this year, but he's not a fan favorite. A lot of people love him. That's probably why he didn't get in. So, that stings. Not the end of the All-Star game when it's in your own city and you have an amazing season. That definitely stings. He's had good years here, Trae Young. He definitely should have made the All-Star game. If there's an injury in the East on, with somebody, he'll probably take their spot. But, yeah, he definitely got snubbed the All-Star game. Mike Conley, he's saying he got snubbed from the All-Star game like the Jazz need another All-Star because they're the best team in the NBA, which I don't disagree with, but I don't think Mike Conley should have been an All-Star. I don't think he's that big of a snub. Chris Middleton, some people were saying him. Eh, Chris Middleton's made the past two years. I don't I don't think so. I really don't think Chris Milton should have been an All-Star this year, and he isn't. So I don't really think he's that big of a snub. I don't know why people are getting that mad over it. Some people were saying Nikola Vucevic shouldn't have made the All-Star game, but he's had a good year. He should have made the All-Star game. But a lot of NBA All-Star snubs this year, a lot of them. That's about for at the buzzer this week, who I thought were got snubbed in the NBA All-Star game. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Those are mine. <laughs> Now, question of the day. The best for last. Today's question is, where will Cam Newton end up next year? Will he still be on the Patriots? I said Marcus Mariota is going to be on the Patriots next year. Will he be on like another team like the Bears? He said he's not going to be a backup. He said he doesn't think 32 players are better than him. Which I don't think either, but there's rookie quarterbacks. who could be better than him. Cam Newton, not that great of a season this year. And last offseason... He was tricking everybody that he was going to have a great year this year, and then the first couple games, he was playing well. Then he ended up to have a terrible season. He's going to trick everybody this offseason again. He's going to post hype workout videos saying, I'm coming back, I'm coming back better than ever, hungrier than ever. And he's still going to have a terrible year. He's still going to throw like four touchdowns. He's still going to be a terrible player this year. Don't buy into the Cam Newton hype. Nobody, nobody should ever buy into the Cam Newton hype. Michigan's quarterback this year, Joe Millen. People are comparing him to Cam Newton. And I actually agree with that comparison now. Their first game, they had great games. And then they were terrible for the rest of the season. Don't ever buy into Cam Newton hype. Don't ever buy into the Cam Newton hype. Ever. Ever. Cam Newton will have a terrible season next year. He does not deserve to be a starting quarterback, in my opinion. No debate about it. That's about for the question of the day. Where do you think Cam Newton will end up next season? That's question of the day. That's about for Square Sports Lane, Frank, episode 24. Thank you for tuning in. Follow Square Sports on Instagram at Square Sports. Follow Square Sports on Twitter at Square Sports. Follow DV Podcast, the best podcast producers in the game, Instagram at DV Podcast. And stay tuned for the best sports content in the world.